The rise and rapid decline of a player once touted as the world's best youngster, Anderson. Blackpool's solitary season in the Premier League was clearly an important bow. Under the eccentric guidance of Ian Holloway, it started in the stylish possible fashion, with a 4-0 thrashing of Wigan Athletic. It would go on to point name results similar as wins over Liverpool and Tottenham, but end with the club demanding to win on the final day at Old Trafford. Already crowned champions, the hosts took an early lead when Sun Park scored, although Blackpool soon came back to take the lead to 2-1. Sadly, the game went into a scoreless tie when Anderson Luis de Avery Oliveira produced a subpar performance that people were used to seeing from him. However, he had a chance to make up for it with Park's help as he converted his cross into Matt Gilkes' top left corner for just his second goal in four. Shortly after, Blackpool fell behind thanks to an own goal by Ian Evatt before Anderson slipped Michael Roy in a through ball from midfield. The former Liverpool player hadn't even started his run, but Anderson's vision allowed him to set up the opportunity, which Owen dutifully finished. Going back to Anderson, things seemed to be going well. He was playing a role for one of the top clubs in the world when he ended that afternoon with a Premier League winner's medal around his neck the third such honour of his career. Anderson would find himself on a descent that was every bit as precipitous as the team he had just helped relegate over the time it took Blackpool to reach League 2, but he was unaware of this at the time. The Brazilian situation wasn't meant to be this dire. Such was the player's potential after his July 2007 transfer from Porto that his initially denied work visa was approved due to the extraordinary quality he would bring to the Premier League. Because of this, he was already awarded the best player at the 2005 Under-17 World Cup. Anderson was largely regarded as a future star. Anderson began his professional career with local club Gia Amayo after being born in Ronaldinho's hometown of Porto Alegre. Early comparisons to the two-time World Player of the Year arose as a result of their comparable career paths. But upon arriving in Manchester, Anderson sent out a message of reality. Ronaldinho is Ronaldinho. Anderson is Anderson, although it was a straightforward remark. It also had a deeper connotation. When Anderson's father died when he was 14 years old, he assumed leadership of the family as the oldest son. Many of his childhood pals who had succumbed to drugs and violence died when they were teenagers. Because of his difficult background, Anderson had to figure out who he was at a young age. The football player sent his mother Doralis, who worked two jobs to support her son's talent, and his three siblings all the money he made from the sport. Anderson made his first team debut at age 16 and scored a free kick against longtime rivals International thanks to his mother's persistence. He was demoted in his debut season and later scored the goal against an Utico to send Gio Amayo back to the top division, even though his team only had seven men. Because of his significant influence, Anderson quickly began to draw attention outside of Brazil. As a result, in June 2005, he chose to follow the well-worn path of other Brazilian athletes and sign with Porto. However, he was unable to move until he became 18, which wasn't for another year. His mother also moved to avoid this, enabling Anderson to transfer on the basis of family. His manager then purposefully left him out of the squad after he made his official move to Porto in January 2006 in order to keep the Brazilian at his disposal for the entire July 2006 season and prevent word of his talent from reaching other European clubs. As a result, he only appeared on the field five times in his rookie season, but was immediately thrown into the action the next year. With the honour of wearing the legendary number 10, Anderson scored in the Superta team's opening round 3-0 triumph over VIT Rear Setbull and added assists in his first two league games. He made his Champions League debut in September 2006, capping his remarkable climb. This was curtailed after a terrible challenge by Benfica's Costas Katsuronis in October. The broken leg suffered by Anderson was to keep him out until the new year and he only returned in the reverse of that fixture in April 2007. He ended the season with three goals and five assists from 19 games. But there was far more to Anderson than these numbers. Many were amazed by the youngster's talent, not just his dribbling, passing and technique, but his ability to dictate the tempo of a match. There were also lightning bursts of speed and fantastic strength for a player standing at just 5 foot 7 inches. Links emerge with Jos Marinho's Chelsea owned to Anderson's TIs to the gestifute agency of George Mendes and Real Madrid. Therefore, the move to Manchester came as something of a surprise. Sir Alex Ferguson sent his brother Martin to watch several games, and the response was a glowing plea to sign him. Sir Alex duly obliged, 
showing no hesitation to spend nearly £20 million on a teenager who had started fewer than 30 professional games. Such was the rate of his ascent that Brazil manager Dunga named the uncapped 19-year-old in his squad for the 2007 Copa America. In his debut against Sunderland, he was used in a similar role to the one he had at Porto, sitting just behind Wayne Rooney in the hole. But he was ineffective, however, hauled off at half-time and quickly found his position adjusted to a deeper role. This has since been attributed to the challenge from Katsuranas, which saw Anderson lose a yard of pace he never got back. In total, he played 38 times in his debut season, although he registered more medals than contributions to goals. A failure to find the net from over 2,200 minutes of football was a disappointment, although he did convert when it mattered most firing home his spot kick in the Champions League final shootout win over Chelsea. That has been the most significant thing the Brazilian did till this day. After a season had settled in, an outstanding season was prevented from occurring by injury. Anderson was in and out of the team, but he did participate in the Champions League final for the second straight year, replacing Carlos Tervez at half-time in a 2-0 loss to Barcelona. Despite his lack of impact, he had already become a cult favourite among United supporters, who gave him a memorable chant that compared the midfielder to Sex Fabregas. A long overdue rebound finish from the edge of the box in a 3-1 victory at Tottenham marked the start of the October 2009 season for the team. But by this time, the normally upbeat Brazilian was beginning to show signs of cracks. Ferguson and the player had a well-known falling out in January 2010, during which the manager criticised the player's lack of professionalism and benched him for a number of games. Then, against West Ham, a month later, Anderson suffered an anterior cruciate ligament tear, ending his season. He temporarily relocated to Portugal during this sabbatical. When he got into a car accident at 7 in the morning, further enraging his management, Anderson made a comeback to the team in early September and helped United win another Premier League championship. The Brazilian's two goals in the 4-1 semi-final second leg victory against Chalca, which guaranteed him a spot in his third Champions League final in for years, stand out as highlights of this season. He was not used as a substitute in this match, which Barcelona won once more. Another knee injury largely voided his December 2011 season, with hamstring issues hampered the following one, which again culminated in a Premier League winner's medal. Of significance was the departure of Ferguson, a man who was uncharacteristically loyal and persistent with Anderson. The impact of the Scott on Anderson is clear with the Brazilian one of many former players to simply refer to him as the boss. The nationality of the man in the dugout remained the same, although David Moyes' view of Anderson was markedly different. Anderson's supposed lack of commitment was at odds with Moyes' hard-working ethos, meaning during the first half of the season, he played for a grand total of 247 minutes. In January 2014, he was shipped out to Fiorentina, and despite Vincenzo Montella showing initial faith in Aloni, Poor form meant by April, he was once again reduced to a place on the bench. The Brazilian returned to Old Trafford with Moyes having been sacked, although his replacement was even less impressed. Luis van Gaal is notoriously selective over his players and took a dim view of Anderson's attitude and weight. Having been so frequently injured, the player failed to undertake the required amount of fitness training to quickly get back to peak condition. During his rehabilitation, he was also known to eat junk food something which only increased his rate of physical deterioration. A key role in the infamous 4-0 loss at MK Dons was followed by a fleeting 20-minute substitute appearance at Burnley four days later. After that, Anderson was never seen in a United shirt again. Still only 26, he failed to make a matchday squad, eventually returning to Brazil in January 2015. Joining GRMIO's bitter rivals international, things showed no sign of improvement. On his debut against Cruzeiro, he missed a penalty, going on to become the target of abuse from his own fans after a 5-0 loss in the Greenall derby. The final straw was a training ground bus up with teammate William in October 2016 that saw Anderson suspended. He did return to the side later that month, although this coincided with Inter being relegated for the first time in their 107 years history. The following season saw Anderson loaned to top-flight Coritiba, although a continued lack of impact on the pitch resulted in another relegation. In his absence, Inter bounced back at the first time of asking, and with Anderson's loan at Coritiba done, his contract was terminated in January 2018. Still only 29, he spent the next six months unattached, 
eventually deciding the next step was a return to Europe. In late July, he signed with Turkish second-tier outfit Adana Demirspor, a historic club from the south of the country. Having supposedly received advice from former teammates Peep and Ricardo Quaresma, the player looked unenthused during his unveiling. He is also clearly still overweight, and as the highest-paid player in the league, it would be no surprise to see this move also backfire. The club have started the new season well, sitting in the playoff spots, although Anderson is of little importance to this. So far, he has only played once, in the third round of the Chirica Cupers against Yeni Ordespor, having been omitted from all squads in the league. Once upon a time world's football's golden boy, Anderson's career now looks hopelessly tarnished. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments below. Bye for now.